The first thing, and the most important really, is when and how much to irrigate. As simple as that sounds, that is the whole holy grail of irrigation water management. If you know when and how much, you have it. And there are sensors that can help us identify those, that profile. And I have some samples that I'd like to show. Mm -hmm. And I happen to have a see-through version of a probe like this. So uh, you've heard all about the probes from Troy, different types. In a, from a commercial point of view, we like this kind of thing. It's a capacitance probe, but we call it a profile probe because we have numerous sensors built into this. This is just a two-foot one with six sensors in there, and you can actually see them there in pairs. But you can get this in any length. In the wine grapes, people might put in six footers of these, and you can get up to 15 sensors in there. But the beauty is, I'm going to make one hole, and I can auger it tight, and I'm disturbing a minimum of soil. I press this in very deep, um, and it's designed to be subsurface. So this is a see-through version, but the real thing, it's, it's, it's just gray, and it's fully filled up with resin, and I got one of those. So that's what it would look like, the real thing. And you can bury this thing below the surface. The beauty is, once you've done that, it is safe. People can walk over it, put a ladder on it, drive a vehicle over it. The only thing that'll kill it in an organic orchard is a rototiller that slices it. And then we have wire on it. We'll run it through a conduit to keep it safe from gophers and things. Take it up a post and then into the telemetry box. And here we have a sample of that. And this telemetry unit can do all sorts of things. It's a data logger that will activate the probe, take a reading as often as you like, package it, send it off, in this case, cellular. And you can see it has solar panels, so it will recharge its own battery. And underneath here, there are inputs for several other things, like a pressure switch in the line. Very handy to know when the water is on. You could put an uh, ambient air temperature sensor on here, so you know you could use it for frost control. You could know when you need to do hydro cooling if you have the ability and so on leaf wetness sensors, so you could build this into a complete weather station right, right here in the orchard. And this is one model. And they come in all shapes and sizes. Here's another one, um, very, very compact, doesn't even have solar as you can see. It has a, a high capacity battery that will last several years. And it has all the basic connections. So I can put a probe, a switch, a temper, temp sensor and so on on there. And very conveniently packaged. So again, we have that, it can be cellular or it could be a radio, it could be satellite. And that's just our way of getting the data out, so between what's happening below the ground to what you're seeing on the computer screen. That's kind of the, the magic link between the two. So once the information gets to the web, we'll feed it into a computer program where we can do all sorts of old numbers. But the one important thing is we have a continuous data being collected. That's the, the, the blue line you see here. Important for us is the definition of field capacity. Now normally when you irrigate, as you can see here, you'll see the water spike up. It'll actually saturate the topsoil for a short while. And when the water is shut off, you'll see it drain out of that section. Then you go back to a normal consumption. And uh, Troy had that beautiful demonstration of the sponge. We want to find that magic spot here to know what water, what uh, the soil can hold against gravity. That's how, that's how field capacity line. Then we have another management refill point here. And then we want to stay between these lines to keep the tree in comfort zone. Now this is if you just look at the root zone average that you're dealing with. So that might be the average of multiple sensors. And I'm going to show you what it looks like in more detail. So if you take the same probe, now, we, now we're reporting data through telemetry like this, coming in every hour and for, for multiple sensors. And now you can see Let's take, let's take this one. We fill them up, and you can see the topsoil, that's the red and the orange, dropping down very rapidly. Then the, as you get deeper and deeper, you can see less root activity, and the consumption is coming down slower. So on average, would be fine, but we can see that the topsoil is drying out fairly rapidly. But there again, this is what we want to know in terms of our timing, when to irrigate, and here we want to know how much water to apply. And if we can get that right, that is optimal and we can do various things depending on the crop and what it is we're trying to achieve. So a practical example, the very orchard that we're standing in, it might not be obvious from this camera shot, but it is fairly steep. It must be at least 12% grade. The grower used to have um, impact sprinklers in here. They put on a lot of water very fast and they would be runoff. And a grower might think, you know, when the water starts running off this bed, it must be full. 
and meanwhile the penetration rate is too slow and we're getting a runoff before it actually goes in deep enough. And if you have a probe like this in there, you would see that you only wet it out maybe down to 8 inches, whereas the subsoil is still dry. So you could actually have a combination of water running out of your block and stress due to the subsoil being dry. So the, the solution is obvious. You want to change your irrigation design and put in a sprinkler system like an R10 that would put down the water slow enough so that it won't run off but it would go straight in.